Hello, and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Martha Booker Johnson, and I am the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation, or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. Today's speaker is Andrew Harvey. Andrew is a junior professor at the University of Bayreuth's Faculty of Languages and Literatures. His interests include the languages of the Tanzanian Rift, their documentation and description, their morphosyntax, and the histories and cultures of their speaker communities, especially as evinced through linguistic arts and language contact. Please join me in welcoming Andrew as he presents the fifth annual retrospective of the RBN webinar series. Hi, everyone. And uh, thanks, Martha, for the introduction. So today's talk looks back at the webinar series over the past year. And before I say anything else, I need to say thank you to both Martha as well as Anna Kreut for the for the work that they do hosting these webinars every fortnight. Um, really, without them, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you to both of you. This retrospective looks back at the fifth year of the Rift Valley Network webinars. And in saying that, it bears emphasizing that we have been doing this for five years. Um, what? was begun as a way of bringing our community of specialists together in a very ad hoc way, is now a more or less fortnightly series uh, that has seen talks treating a vast array of topics from virtually all of the languages of the Tanzanian Rift, as well as many others further afield, as well as topics that uh, go beyond language and linguistics and things like cultures and histories, et cetera. Um, as I've done in the past years, I'd like to structure this talk by starting with some basic statistics and then passing into a more subjective review of what we've said and done over the year. Um, characteristically, these talks are a little bit shorter than normal. And uh, so sort of at that point, we'll stop the recording and have some business meeting style discussion on the Rift Valley Network and plans for the future. So the first set of figures here counts the overall numbers of talks given in comparison to previous years. So this year, our total number of talks was 16, which was the same as our 2022 to 2023 series. Um, this year, the total number of talks hosted by the Rift Valley Network uh, in our entire uh, existence has surpassed 100. Uh, for comparison, I've included Leiden University's Colloquium on African uh, Languages and Linguistics with 50 talks in total in 2022, the Triennial World Congress on African Linguistics with just over 250 talks in their 2021 iteration, and the Annual Conference of African Linguistics in 2022 with 91 talks. So given that the rest of these uh, events operate with an actual budget, and are continent-wide in scope rather than just Rift Valley sub-area in scope, I think the regularity with which the Rift Valley Network has been able to meet and discuss topics which are consistently varied, interesting, and important is a testament to the vitality of our community, as well as the vitality and importance of the field of inquiry. Uh, at around 13 hours, individual talks were a bit shorter than average this year. Maybe we're learning how to become more concise or something. Um, but comparing the total talk hours against these established events, whose talks are usually restricted to 20 to 30 minutes each, I still believe that providing a format in which people can present for up to an hour is valuable. As I've mentioned before, another aspect of the webinar series that um, is uh, sort of I like to talk about is that they uh, shortly after presenting, uh, they're made available online uh, and go on to experience sort of a rich life as important resources and learning tools. So here we can see uh, how uh, talks uh, are, uh, how many watch hours on YouTube uh, they will rack up in their first year versus the total in years after. Uh, statistics are similar to Zenodo, where we uh, archive the uh, recordings with their own DOIs. So we can see that they uh, that they go on to be used and, and watched and downloaded quite a fair bit. 
Um, we also continue to chart our presenters according to whether they are male or female and uh, whether or not they are Tanzanian. So I'll let us sit with these figures for a moment. And then presenters by nationality. So beyond the numbers, um, I've tried to distill a couple of themes from this year's talk. So I'll start with one general theme I noticed, followed by a couple of themes related to how talks have reflected the Rafali Network's mission, and then a final theme that was less talked about and more implied in this year's talks. So the general theme I'd like to point out for this year was Kenya and the Taita Hills. Um, we were lucky this year to have five talks, which focused primarily on Kenya, and uh, three specifically on uh, those borderland hills between Kenya and Tanzania, the Taita Hills. Um, in some ways, this was a coincidence. Lutz Martin and Husna Mashaka's project took us to Taveta in the Taita Hills and near Lake Turkana in northern Kenya, respectively. And then, of course, uh, three of our talks were linked more or less closely to the current Leiden University project, the Linguistic History of East Africa, much of whose work is located in what is now Kenya. So this included talks given by Ahmed Sosal, uh, Martin Maus, and Christian Rappold, as well as Derek Nurse. Um, I'm sure that I speak for all Rift Valley Network members when I say that I'm very excited to see some of the published outputs from this project and to begin seeing how it in turn affects our understanding of the Tanzanian rift. So um, watch this space, I expect. Next, uh, I'd like to look at how this year's talks reflected the Rift Valley Network's mission. We produced a mission statement a couple of years back, and I think it's useful to see the ways in which this enters into dialogue with the work of our members. Here, I've highlighted two key elements. Uh, the histories, cultures, and languages aspect, um, as well as uh, the dialogue aspect sort of towards the bottom. And uh, I'd like to underscore how these sort of emerged over the past year. So let's first talk about histories, cultures, and languages. This is perhaps unsurprising. Virtually all of our talks had something to say about the histories, cultures, and languages of the peoples of the Tanzanian Rift. Helen Eaton's talk on class-changing derivation in Sandawe, Melek Rune's account of Iraq, nominal morphosyntax, Jeremy Coburn's acoustic analysis of laryngeal contrasts in VOT and Hadza, and Teresa Poeta and Julius Taji's examination of Swahili in Tanzania are all examples. Um, this year, the concept of dialogue was also quite present. I think particularly of the detailed iterative processes Lizzie Poole described in the development of an Mbugwe community orthography, or the intercultural dialogue Ahadi Molel laid out when talking about the work of the Four Corners cultural program. I have, of course, mentioned this before, but it's worth uh, examining not only what we do, but how we do it. And I think that allowing space for this kind of reporting within the Rift Valley Network would be interesting and useful. Um, a final theme, more implied than explicitly stated this year, was something that I've called spaces for learning. So not only have we enjoyed talks resulting from master's level research, such as uh, Mela Grun's detailed analysis of nominalizations in, in Iraq, but we've also listened to work which looks at Tanzanian student success, such as that conducted by Michael Karani and Tyler Evans Takarik. Uh, one of my talks was the result of collaboration between myself and five other students during a master's course here at the University of Bayreuth. And all of this makes me wonder how we can involve students in the work we do, what kinds of training and support we need to give them to be able to conduct this work. Um, and now uh, to finish, uh, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge each of this year's presenters and the things they talked about. Um, at the end of the day, we each bring something to the webinars, and that sustains both the series and our learning and progress. It has, for the past five years, been a consistent pleasure to be a member of this community, and I'll risk sounding even more trite by saying this, but I really do mean it uh, I hope that we can do this for another five years, and I hope, uh, and I really sort of look forward to everything 
uh, that we bring to this forum. So I'll finish our uh, our um, parade of uh, title slides, and uh, then I think we can probably uh, move on to uh, some further discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page, and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. I hope to see you again at our next webinar by Alexander Anderson and Andrew Harvey on Wednesday, the 17th of April.